Good evening, this is Chuck W3OM. I'm operating as W3OC, net control for the Two Rivers Amateur Radio Club net. This net meets every Monday here at 8 p.m. on the Two Rivers ARC club repeater system, operating at 147.12 MHz and also on link to port 42.250 MHz repeater and also on echo link. Membership in the Two Rivers ARC is not required to check in with this net as all radio amateurs are welcome. Like information about information about the two rivers amateur radio club, you can write to us at PO Box two two five Greenoff PA zip code fifteen zero four seven. We're also on the internet's World Wide Web at, at uh, https uh, slash slash T R A R C dot O R G. In other words, T R A R C dot O R G. And also on Facebook. Radio Club meetings are held on the third Tuesday of every month, except December, starting at 7 p.m. at the uh, at the uh, Plano Volunteer Fire Department Social Hall, 409 Oxford Avenue, Elizabeth, PA. Before opening, that for check-in at emergency or prior to traffic at this time. All right, okay. Um, let's see. Please, when you check into this net, give your call sign slowly and phonetically. It means spell out your call sign and state if you have any announcements or comments for the net. Uh, okay. At this time, I'm looking for the officers of the Two Rivers ARC wish to check into the Two Rivers net. WSARC. WSARC, please recognize Kilo Bravo 3 Sugar Tango, Bob and Elizabeth Township. Good evening, Chuck. Evening to the net. No traffic. Please recognize number three, Juliet, Hotel Bravo, Jim and McKeesport. Good evening to everyone on the net. No traffic. Please recognize Kilo Charlie 3, Uniform November Echo, Mike in North Huntington. No comment, no traffic. Net control. Net control. Recognize Kilo 3, Charlie, Romeo, Oscar, John, Baldwin, no comments, no traffic. Hey, did that time I got Kilo Bravo with Sugar, Sugar Tango? <laughs> Excuse me. November 3, Julie's Hotel Bravo. Kilo Charlie 3 United November Echo and Kilo 3 Charlie Radio Oscar from the Board of Directors. Are there any mem other members of the Board of Directors wishing to check in? Okay. All right. Uh, now we're looking for stations that are operating mobile, portable, or outside of Allegheny County. W3OC. From Alpha, Alpha 3, a mic radio, AA3MR. My name is Walt. Portable here, Clarton Works. Just getting ready to head on. Uh, good evening to you, Chuck, and everybody on the net. No comments. Uh, net control. Control, please copy. Kilo Alpha 3, Yankee Golf Lima Portable, Bruce and Cox Farms, Osage County. Good evening, Chuck. Good evening to the net. No further comments or announcements. W3OC. W3OC, here's Kilo Bravo 3, Victor Sierra Papa, Dan Beaver County. Good evening, Chuck. Good evening to the net. The control, please recognize Whiskey 3, Delta Tango Puppet, Delphin Clarendon. No traffic. DOC. Please recognize November 3 Tango Alpha Uniform. That's N3 TAU Norman Penn. West Morning County, Grieving Shock. No traffic. Okay, that time I got Alpha Alpha 3 Mike Radio Portable, Kilo Alpha 3 Yankee Golf Limo Portable, Kilo Bravo 3 Victor Sierra Papa, Whiskey 3 Delta Tango Papa, November 3 Tango Alpha Uniform. 
Anybody else? Mobile, portable, or outside of Allegheny County? Kilo Charlie 3, Zulu India X-ray. Kilo Charlie 3, Zulu India X-ray. Jeff and Irwin, something for the net. Okay, Kilo Charlie 3, Zulu India X-ray. Uh, Jeff, anybody else? Uh, mobile port more outside of Allegheny County. I didn't hear anybody setting out that they were on, on Echo Link, so uh, I'll take a quick standby. Anybody on Echo Link, I'll give an extra little standby in there in, in case somebody's on Echo Link. Okay. All right. Uh, now open up for general check ins. Anyone else like to check in on the town so call now? Uh, W3OC, WA3I, all of you. W3OC. This is Keo Alpha 3, Keo Sierra Papa Jim and Carnegie. Okay, got Whiskey America 3 in the Oscar uniform and Keto Alpha 3, Keto Sugar Papa. Anybody else, please? Okay, all right, thank you all for taking the time to check in with us this evening. I know it's a busy evening uh, for watching TV, that's for sure. Uh, what with the Steeler football game on tonight. And I, I think it'll look World Series is on tonight, too, but uh, maybe I don't have that exactly uh, exactly right. But uh, uh, those who are here tonight, I'm glad you took the time to check in with us this evening. All righty, let's see here. Hey, does anyone have listed of silent keys any radio amateurs have recently passed away? No, I hadn't heard anything lately. Okay. All right. Uh, let me get into some, i got some general announcements uh, here tonight. Uh, uh, quite a bit, of course, and hopefully, and um, uh, maybe maybe some of this in information will be, a, be of use to, to help you or not. And regarding the Two Rivers activities, we have a, a bunch of activities we do during the course of the month, and uh, they're mostly they're always open to uh, uh, to, the, to the general amateur public who wish to join us. Uh, we have four other we have a total of four radio nets that meet on the air uh, on different frequencies and bands and stuff like that. Uh, Wednesday nights at 8:30 p.m. we have the Two Rivers Amateur Radio Club Gab Net. That's a social gathering and uh, a, a pretty linked to pretty uh, laid back event. You're welcome to join us for that. That starts at, uh, that's on the uh, club repeater system, 147.12 and 442.250 megahertz. And of course, uh, also on, on Echo Link, if uh, you have that capability. Um, Thursday nights, uh, we have the 10 meter net on uh, frequency 28.460 at 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, the only time we don't have that Thursday night net is with we, when we run the operations at night. I'll get into that here in a moment. And on Friday nights uh, at 6 p.m. new time, uh, the Tours ARC 40-meter uh, gap net meets on uh, frequency 72.15 kilohertz on the 40-meter band. Dep and depending on, on frequency ability, we might be up or down a few kilohertz. Uh, last week we were, uh, I think we were, Two kilohertz down below from below that because of uh, because of uh, of, uh, of radio activity. So uh, uh, those are the uh, the club nets. So I have uh, on the second Saturday of each month another social gathering for members and anybody else who wishes to join us, including family members. It's called the Hams and Eggs Breakfast. It starts at 9:30 a.m. A.M. in the morning at a local restaurant, the Rock Run Inn, located on uh, Rock Run Road over in Butler's Golf Course in Elizabeth, PA. That's right off of Rock 48. This radio club meetings are held on the third Tuesday of each month at 7 p.m. Uh, at the link uh, at the uh, Plano Volunteer Fire Department Social Hall. Uh, 
usually the social hall. That's located at 409, Rocks, uh, 409 Oxford Drive in Elizabeth, PA. Okay, other upcoming uh, Radio Two Rivers ARC uh, activities um, include the uh, for the uh, club members and their families the uh, uh, the holiday dinner. Uh, it's going to be held at 1 p.m. at the Rock Run Inn. Again, I mentioned that's just a restaurant at Butler's Golf Course on Rock Run Road, and they're taking reservations for that. Uh, members are reminded there's limited occupa occup occupancy on the room we're using. So if you're planning on attending uh, with a guest or not a guest, uh, you should uh, uh, get your uh, reservation in uh, as soon as you can. Um, on the uh, of, uh, of December, uh, we also have an exam session coming up at 6.30 p.m. at the McKeesport Area High School, Eden Park Boulevard, McKeesport, Pennsylvania. Recently announced, the on April 6th will be the Two Rivers Amateur Radio Club Ham Fest. That starts at 8 a.m. We're using a new location this year, um, for next year, I should say. It'll be the Lincoln Borough Volunteer Fire Department Social Hall, 4312 Liberty Way, Elizabeth, PA. More information is to be announced on that. So those are some of the club activities that are coming up. Okay, looking on a regular calendar of activities I could find. Of course, uh, this week is Halloween on the 31st. That's not an amateur radio event, not specifically, but a lot of people participate in that. Um, this weekend on the 2nd through the 4th is a contest, the Airwell Sweepstakes. Sweepstakes, that's an HF activity. It's a CW mode. Um, on uh, November 3rd, of course, daylight savings times ends, and uh, we all know about that fallback. Get an extra hour of sleep on on that. Um, on the fourth of, no, of November, the, the uh, Still City and, and North Hills ARC are going to be conducting a, a Parks on the Air uh, and and a Fox Hunt all in one activity. Starts at 11 a.m. at the McConnell's Mills State Park. So that's something new. And of course, uh, don't forget uh, next week is Election Day. So. If you haven't got your ballot in already uh, by mail, if you're doing by mail, you should get it in as to ASAP, or you can uh, you can vote on election day itself. That's uh, on the fifth. November 9th, there's an ARES meeting at 9:30 a.m. Uh, at the Skyview Radio Society, uh, their 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 clubhouse at uh, Turkey Ridge Road in New Kensington, PA. And, of course, the same day in the morning, we have the, the Hampton Eggs breakfast at 9.30 over there to rock run in. On the 14th of October, on the 14th of November, is the TORARC Operations Night, 7 p.m. at the Lincoln Borough Volunteer Fire Department Social Hall, 4312 Liberty Way. And this is the AOP. I hope somebody can make it out for that. 19th is the Tours ARC Club Meeting at 7 p.m. at Plain Hill Volunteer Fire Department, 409 Oxford Drive in Elizabeth, PA. November 16th through the 18th is the ARL, uh, at the contest, ARL Sweepstakes Single Side Band Mode. Uh, these, these contests are quite busy, and uh, you're invited to participate in those. On the 23rd and 24th of November is the, another contest, the Seek of Worldwide DX Contest, is CW Mode. Okay, and of course on the 28th of November is, uh, is Thanksgiving. Okay, I think, of course, the Tourist ARC does participate normally in the Winter Field Day. That's coming up in January on the 25th and 26th. Uh, the Radio Club participation will have, we have more information on that to be announced. And also, by the way, Hamfest wise, uh, I ran into, uh, found the information on the Wireless Association of South Hills Hamfest, or called Washfest as it's called. Uh, that's going to be held on February the 23rd at the South Park uh, Home Economics Building, 3735 Buffalo Drive, South Park Township, PA. Uh, that information came out of their newsletter, what they call the wash rag. Okay, of course, our hand fest at Two Rivers ARC on April 6th at the 
Liberty Borough Volunteer Fire Department up there on Liberty Way in the, in uh, Elizabeth, PA. Okay. Alrighty. Let's see. Do I have anything else? I don't think so. I'll take a standby. Does anybody need to repeat or anything they've heard? It's W3OC. And heard. Alrighty. Uh, N3 JHP, if you're ready, please uh, please continue with this line uh, via Echo Link. Thank you, Chuck. This is N3 JHP. We're going to be conducting a bit of an experiment tonight. We're going to be bringing you the news line via Echo Link, computer to computer. So uh, hopefully all goes well. If it doesn't, I apologize ahead of time. But uh, we've tested it, and I think we're uh, ready to rock and roll. So here we go. Two Radio Newsline Report number 2,452, with a release date of Friday, October 25th, 2024, to follow in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The following is a QST. A shortwave radio giant in Austria is poised to shut down. One of the last remaining Navajo code talkers becomes a silent key, and a TV crime drama in Germany probes a ham radio murder mystery. All this and more is Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 2,452 comes your way right now. From around the world, this is Newsline. Amateur Radio's independent, on-the-air news and bulletin service. And now reporting from Valparaiso, Indiana, here's Paul Brown, WD9GCO. Our top story this week takes us to Austria, where a giant among the world's shortwave stations is poised to go off the air at the end of the year. Graham Kemp, VK4BB, has those details. After weeks of speculation, Austria's ORS shortwave radio station confirmed its shutdown date will be December 31. The news came to the German National Ham Radio Society's weekly Radio Dark program on October 14, as reported in their October 20 program. The station recently lost its major broadcast client, Adventist World Radio, which will end its transmissions this month. That leaves only a handful of customers to the ORS station, including Radio Dark, for whom it carried a special worldwide broadcast of the World Radio Sports Team Championship in 2018. The shortwave site was formerly the Radio Austria International Broadcast Station and is well known for having had Europe's largest directional antenna system for shortwave members. ORS is among the few remaining shortwave broadcasters in Europe and has provided programming for listeners in the Near East, the Middle East and Africa. I'm Graham Kemp, VK4BB. A helicopter crashed into a communications tower near downtown Houston, Texas on Sunday, October 20th. Kent Peterson, KC0DGY, brings us up to date. Four people on board a helicopter died after it crashed into a radio tower in Houston, scattering debris for miles and setting off a grass fire in the immediate area. Various media reports said no one on the ground was injured, either from the fiery crash or the subsequent collapse of the tower on Sunday, October 20th. The city's mayor, John Whitmire, told local media that it was fortunate that the tower, which had guy wires, collapsed instead of toppling over. The mayor said the explosion set off by the crash was like, quote, a fireball out of the air, end quote. The crash victims reportedly included a child. Houston's ABC 13 News said that the tower was equipped with red flashing lights designed to make it visible to aircraft, but the lights had a history of malfunctioning. KHOU Channel 11 said the lights were reported as not working on the 16th of October. SBA Communications, which acquired the tower on September 6th, released a statement on Monday, the 21st of October, addressing the issue of the failed lights. The company said it had filed a notice to air missions with the FAA as required when a tower presents potentially hazardous conditions that may have an effect on aircraft. The statement said the notice was filed while the new ownership began to work to integrate the tower into its network operations center. Antennas on the tower included those of three Houston area radio stations. The National Transportation Safety Board is leading the investigation. This is Kent Peterson, KC0, DGY. Good fortune smiled upon the recent youngsters on the air sub-regional camp in Tunisia. For one thing, the camp coincided with the major worldwide scouting event, Jamboree on the Air. For another thing, 
they received some important monetary support. We have those details from Jeremy Boot, G4, NJH. Young radio amateurs throughout the north of Africa enjoyed the weekend sub-regional camp of Youngsters on the Air with the support of a grant from the Yasmi Foundation. The grant to the Association of Tunisian Radio Amateurs was announced on the Foundation's website five days before the camp itself got underway on the 18th of October. This is the second year that IARU Region 1 Yota has been able to organize an African sub-regional camp. This year's participants included two youngsters each from Mauritania, Morocco, Egypt, Libya and Algeria. Young hams were also joined by members of the Tunisian Scouts who were very familiar with the location as a well-used international scout camp facility. Organizers said that the inclusion of scouts this year will allow the hams to expand their own network even more. Camp activities include building antennas, fox hunting, solving problems, and of course, getting on the air. This is Jeremy Bucci for NJH. Yet another experiment in the use of laser communications to send data has been declared a success. We hear about it from Jeremy Boot, G4, NJH. Defense officials in France have publicly praised an experiment in high-speed optical satellite communication that they hope will eventually become useful in the nation's military space strategy. The experiment resulted in successful space-to-earth laser communication between a small ground station and Keronos, a nano-satellite, launched late last year into low Earth orbit. It has another example of scientists exploring the use of optical waves as an alternative to using radio. The ground station was described as a white dome, four meters in diameter, with a telescope sticking out. It was able to track and receive transmitted data. The French Defence Ministry released a statement in September extolling the advantages of optical communication, which included speed, direction and independence from regulations that coordinate the use of radio waves, even if this optical link can sometimes be upset by atmospheric turbulence, the Keronos satellite is able to overcome it in order to achieve optimum transmission quality. The project is the result of a collaboration between France's Defence Innovation Agency and a small company known as K-Labs. This is Jeremy Bucci for NJH. One of the three remaining World War II veterans, known as Navajo Code Talkers, has died. John Kinsel Sr. died in his sleep at his Arizona home on Saturday, the 19th of October. He served in the United States military in the elite group of Marines who used their native language as the basis of a code to securely transmit troop movement information and other critical messages. The code was never broken by the enemy. According to various news reports, with his death, only two of the original Navajo code talkers remain. John Kinsel Sr. was 107. Using their imagination and their devotion to amateur radio, young radio operators are once again being invited to enter the Dream Rig Contest, sponsored by the Intrepid DX Group. Cell MB, KB3TZD, tells us what's involved. Licensed amateurs who are 19 years of age and younger are being given the challenge to describe the role and benefits ham radio brings to modern society. They're also being asked how more young amateurs can be inspired to get on the air. It's not an easy question, of course, but the sponsor behind the fifth annual Dream Rig Essay Contest, the Intrepid DX Group, knows something about big challenges itself. Through the years, the nonprofit group has been the force behind major D expeditions and other radio activities around the world. Young amateurs with U.S. or Canadian radio licenses who live in either country or in any of the U.S. territories are eligible. For details on ways to submit the essay and to see rules for the competition itself, visit the Facebook page of the Intrepid DX Group. Essays are due no later than the 30th of November. Winners will be announced in December. This is Cell MB, KB3, TZD. Time for you to identify your station. We are the Amateur Radio Newsline. Heard on bulletin stations around the world, including the K9JX repeater of the Jacksonville Amateur Radio Society in Jacksonville, Illinois, on Saturdays at 9 p.m.
in New Zealand, a new awards program has erupted, and we really do mean erupted, Volcanoes on the Air. Jim Meachin, ZL2BHF, has the details. The city of Auckland isn't just home to the most people in New Zealand. It is also where you'll find the most volcanoes, 53 to be precise. The region, known as the Auckland Volcanic Field, has inspired radio amateurs to launch a new program, Volcanoes on the Air. Although some hams have already had a jump start in calling CQ from the volcanic region, the QSOs begin in earnest with the official kickoff of the program on the 3rd of November. The website ontheair.nz has been updated to provide information for the new volcanoes on the air award scheme. The site also contains details on a variety of other programs, such as HEMA, POTA, SOTA, Lighthouses and IOTA. An announcement on the info line of the New Zealand Association of Radio Transmitters encourages hams to give it a try, noting that the activity does not require a lot of hiking uphill. The website geo.net notes that the volcanic field is mostly utilised for public parks and recreation, and that the volcanoes are considered unlikely to have any eruptions especially since the last one on record was at least 600 years ago. So the only things active in this volcanic field are likely to be the radio amateurs themselves calling CQ. This is Jim Meachin, ZL2BHF. The U.S. Air Force Military Auxiliary Radio System will be marking its 76th year with a special event from the 5th through the 11th of November. Stephen Kinford, N8WB, tells us how to get involved. The celebration of Air Force Mars and its 76 years on the air is open to licensed amateurs in all three U.S. classes. Operators will be using CW, SSB, and digital modes on 80 through 6 meters in the parts of the bands assigned to general and technician class licensees. Operations are identified by 10 geographic regions called communications wings. There will also be operators on the air from the Pentagon Mars Station in Washington, D.C., Shriver Space Force Base in Colorado, Hancock Field Air National Guard in New York, and the Travis Air Force Base Mars Station in California. For a list of the special event call signs and a description of the exchanges that will be used, visit the link that appears in the text version of this week's newscast at arnewsline.org. The Air Force Mars system was created to assist U.S. military and civilian government with communications when needed. This is Stephen Kinford, N8WB. In the world of DX, listen for Neil, G0RNU, operating holiday style, as 6Y slash G0RNU from Jamaica, IOTA number NA097, from the 23rd of October through to the 6th of November. He will operate single sideband and digital modes on 40 through 6 meters, QSL via EQSL. Steve, NY3B, is on the air as J68SS from St. Lucia, IOTA number NA108, until the 29th of October. He will also be one of the J62K operators during the CQ Worldwide DX Single Sideband Contest on October 26th and 27th. See QRZ.com for QSL details. Tay, T-A-1-H-Z, is operating from Tabor, Tanzania, until late 2025 as 5-H-8-H-Z. Listen for him on the air, holiday style, on 40 through 10 meters. He will focus on 40, 30, 12, and 10. See QRZ.com for QSL details. In Uganda, Don, G-3-X-T-T, will operate as 5-X-1-D-F using CW and some FT-8. And Alan, G3XAQ, who will operate as 5X1XA using CW from the 13th through to the 27th of November. Listen for them in the CQ Worldwide DXCW contest, where they will participate as single band entrants. See QRZ.com for QSL details. The American film and TV industry isn't the only creative community adding amateur radio to its cast of fictional characters. Amateur radio found its way recently into an episode of a popular TV crime drama in Germany. While that's good news for ham radio, it 
didn't have the best outcome for one of the fictional TV hams. We learn why from Ralph Squalachi, KK6ITB. Very early on in Season 16, Episode 2 of the ZDF German crime drama Soko Stuttgart, Harmut, DH4NO, becomes a silent key rather quickly, rather violently, and quite mysteriously. It happens in the middle of a two-meter QSO he is having with a friend as both are playing the two-person board game Battleship. The friend, Sharati, a new ham with the call sign DR5TI, hears the contact go dead, quite literally. He summons police, and that sets the Soko team, the team of the series title, into action. Soko is the acronym in German for the Regional Special Police Task Force. As the crime squad focuses its probe on the amateur radio club the men belonged to, any hams viewing the show can immediately recognize the rigs, which were supplied by the DARC Stuttgart Radio Club. There are also familiar lessons in propagation and, of course, that important call, CQ. It's a bit unclear as to why some unlicensed operators in this primetime drama are seen transmitting on some of the ham equipment, but this is, after all, fiction. And unlike this particular story, not all mysteries were meant to be solved. For those who want to practice their German, the show can be seen in the ZDF video store at the address given in the text version of the script on our website, arnewsline.org. This is Ralph Squillacci, KK6 ITB. If a good day of radio is like poetry to you, pick up a pencil. Join the Amateur Radio Newsline Haiku Challenge. Share your experience by sending an original haiku to us here at Newsline. Use the entry form on our website, arnewsline.org, and please follow the rules for writing your three-line haiku. Sorry, but we cannot accept any entries that aren't written in traditional haiku form. Share with fellow listeners the poetry that is inspired by your ham radio experience. With thanks to ABC 13, Amateur Radio Daily, Breaking Defense, British DX Club, CNN.com, David Behar, K7DB, Ed Donnelly, KB2UNZ, 425DX News, the FCC, The Guardian, Infoline, NZART, Intrepid DX Group, NBC News, QRZ.com, Radio DARC, Radio World, shortwaveradio.de, the Wireless Institute of Australia, Yoda Region 1, ZDF, and you, our listeners, that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline. We remind our listeners that Amateur Radio Newsline is an all-volunteer nonprofit organization that incurs expenses for its continued operation. If you wish to support us, please visit our website at arnewsline.org and know that we appreciate you all. We also remind our listeners that if you like our newscast, please leave us a five-star rating wherever you subscribe to us. For now, with Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the news desk in New York, and our news team worldwide, I'm Paul Brown, WD9GCO in Valparaiso, Indiana, saying 73. As always, we thank you for listening. Amateur Radio Newsline is copyright 2024. All rights reserved. This concludes the Newsline transmission. This is N3JHB, back to net control. Okay, thank you, N3JHB, and the Two Rivers Net, this is W3OC, net control for the Two Rivers Net. Thank you for Newsline. <coughs> okay, uh, I don't have any more comments or announcements that I can I can think of offhand. Uh, okay, um, let's see. Did anybody have any comments or anything that I could make before we take some late check-ins? Okay. All righty. Anyone else wishing to check into the Two Rivers Net call now? Two Rivers Net. This is Karen Free Hotel, India Romeo. Good evening, Chuck. No comment. We got Keto Three Hotel in your radio and November Three Juliet Papa Quebec. Somebody was on Echo Link. You got covered up. Try again. W three O C. 
This is Antonio, November 3, Alpha Hotel Charlie, alongside Hugo, Kilo Charlie 3, Echo Yankee Echo, here in Pittsburgh and on Echoing. Good evening, Chuck, and those on the net, I have no traffic. Okay, hey, that time I got Kilo 3 Hotel into your radio, November 3, Julius Papa, Quebec. <clears throat> Excuse me, and Antonio, N3, N3 Alpha Hotel Charlie on Echoing. Okay, thank you. Nice to hear you guys in here tonight. Anybody else wish to check in, call now. Take 37 p.m. local time, 0037 UTC. I'm going to close the net out at this hour. Thank you, everybody. We did take the time to check it was this evening. And uh, please be, uh, if you can, if you want to, check into our other nets that we have during the course of the week. Our next scheduled net would be on uh, Wednesday nights at 8.30 p.m. on this repeater system and also on Echolink. I count 16 check-ins on a check-in list, and we had two on Echolink. So that's a grand total of 16 altogether, 14 are up in and two on the echo link. Uh, with that, uh, I'm going to kind of repeat it back to General Amateur Use. Thanks, everybody. And go Steers. And it's W3OC also on W3ON closing the two rivers down.